All right. So now let's talk about fat regulation. Now this is the second aspect of the metabolic brain. So first was meal regulation. Now it's fat regulation. All right. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is a study from 1943 from John Brobeck. Now, this was a definitive study because it was for the first time it showed that overeating is the primary cause of obesity. And in this study, he lesioned mice's ventral medial hypothalamus. This is a center in the brain that is very important for body fat regulation. So they basically took it out of the brain of these mice. And what they found is that they would overeat, overeat, and then they'd gain weight. And here are five key findings. So damage to the hypothalamus caused overeating. Sufficient, uh, food intake was sufficient to explain the observed weight gain. Overeating was necessary to ob obtain weight gain. Decreased activity was secondary to the food intake. And overeating subsided eventually. So they had overeat, overeat, and then once they reached a certain body weight, they would stop overeating. Okay? So it appeared that there was a, the lack of a satiation signal um, from the removal of this tonic long-acting signal um, caused overeating, which caused weight gain, all right? And this led to the lipostasis theory, that energy balance is controlled by a feedback loop, okay? The amount of body fat that you keep on, your, on yourself is controlled by a feedback loop, all right? And although that they, and this, the amount of stored energy that is sensed by the hypothalamus, and then it regulates energy intake, both food consumption and energy expenditure, to maintain a constant body fat level. But they didn't know what the signal was. So they knew that this feedback loop was happening, but they, they hadn't identified the signal yet. And then in 1994, Robert Friedman from Rockefeller University discovered leptin. And this is a quote from him, the paper, leptin may function as a part of the signaling pathway from adipose tissue that acts to regulate the size of the fat depot. Okay? And since that time, before that, we thought that fat was just this inert uh, substance that kept the body warm, provided energy substances for, for energy. But now we know that it is an exocrine gland. It releases, it releases hormones, right? So the adipocyte will undergo a normal signal transduction like other cells to produce hormones, right? And in fact, I think that the current count is close to 50 different substances that are metabolically active that are released from body fat, leptin just being one of them. Most of them are inflammatory. All right. Now, inflammatory in some contexts, it sounds really bad, and it is when it's out of balance. But normally, it's just helping to this inflammatory signaling is maintaining normal physiological processes. All right. So things like blood pressure and, and energy regulation, lipid metabolism. Right. So now let's look to see how does leptin actually influence both food intake and energy expenditure in the brain. Okay. So it's released from fat proportional to the amount of stored triglyceride. And then it's got to actually get into the brain to do, do its job. All right? So leptin will inhibit neurons called neuropeptide Y or agudulated polypeptide. These are neurons that actually make you very hungry. So if you stimulate those neurons, they make animals feast ravenously. All right? And they'll also decrease energy expenditure, both of which will serve to increase the amount of stored body fat. Next, they will promote the activity of a neuron group that does something completely opposite. It, it suppresses appetite and it increases activity, okay? So how does it do this, right? By the presence of leptin will act by, through endocrine mechanisms, by releasing hormones, through autonomic mechanisms, and then also by changing our behavior. And interestingly, we also know that leptin and will affect synaptic plasticity. So the presence of leptin will also keep other neurons healthy and functioning well when in balance. Okay, so now let's talk about how, sometimes you have to talk about things very encapsulated to understand the concept. Let's, let's talk about how they work together. So how does leptin influence satiety? So this, these numbers are just basically to con conceptualize a, a, the, um, the point that I'm trying to make about how they work together. So here you've got a steady state situation, right? And so basically your leptin level is, we'll, ca we'll call it normal, right? And you take in a meal, right? And you develop a satiety signal of two, okay? Now, if you've overeaten, your body fat stores increase, right? Leptin levels rise. The same exact size meal will create a different level of satiety. So you actually get full sooner. And the reason being is if you remember the different satiety signals that I was talking about earlier, 
they coalesce in the brainstem by sampling blood and looking at nerve signals. Well, one of the things that they sample in the area of postrema is actually the leptin level. So conversely, and here's the rub, when you lose body fat, the same size meal again produces less of a fullness signal, so you're encouraged to eat more. So this is one way where these two systems interact to affect, uh, ultimately, this defended level, this, what's called defended adiposity, okay?